to start this off. Let's kind of. I'm going to do a survey within the within the room. How many of you, how many of you uh, are in a company that's between zero and fifty people? All right, fifty people and a hundred people. Oh, lone survivor. All right, uh, hundred and two hundred. Two hundred plus. All right, we got a, we got a number of you guys. So hopefully. This uh, you know, talk will actually be helpful for you um, when you think about you know, uh, kind of iterating and innovating within a larger company, or even a smaller company. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Eddie. This doesn't really tell you much. It actually is. I'm actually from Washington, D.C., and I moved here roughly about three years ago to be the EIR at this company called Jamba. So actually, the company was called Just a Digital. I don't know if anyone knows of that. So, Just a Digital was more or less the company that bought Jamba in 2010. Um, as you know, Jamba in and of itself is a company that has been around since 2002. Um, they were the first Sommer Brother company um, to, to come out. So, to give you a little bit of context, this is more or less the timeline of Jamba in and of itself. Um, you know, in 2000, we had you know, Jamba, then it you know, started going to venture capital, so Summit Partners owned, owned them. At some point, for, uh, Verisign owned them, and then Fox, uh, Fox Mobile owned, owned them uh, roughly between 2007 and 2008. And then in 2010, uh, Jamba uh, purchased us. Uh, Jester uh, was purchased by Jamba. And so when you think about entrepreneurship, you know, you're looking at this large company that has tons and tons of history, um, what does it really mean to me? I mean, why would I come to a big corporation? Um, because my background is primarily in startups. I started at Google and I have over you know, 12 years of ad tech experience. Why would Jamba, a mobile content company, want me? Right? Well, in, in reality, what ended up happening was Jamba offers all these services. And when they offer these services, they attempt to market these services throughout the world. The reason why you've heard of Jamba is because of the fact that they shoved it down your throat at some point in time, right? And so when you look at that, they don't just shove that down your throat through TV, web, and mobile, um, but they, they constantly are remarketing you uh, as a consumer. And they, they operate under a number of different products and services. So, for instance, how many of you recognize this guy? All right, great. So this guy, in 2004, I had to write this down because I couldn't believe it when I saw it. So in 2004, um, he generated roughly about $400 million in revenue. Really? Yeah. In the UK alone, he generated roughly about four, 40 million pounds. This guy was downloaded 50 million times around the world. So this is why Fox bought them, right? That makes sense. Then you got this guy. Uh, this guy is actually Rene Latope. He's um, a little hamster um, character. He actually had a gold record in France. <laughs> Surprising, right? Surprising. It's, he has a gold record in France. And in France, this is during 2010, he was a number two downloaded artist, second to Shakira's Waka Waka song, which was the, <laughs> you know, the World Cup song of 2010. So this is a huge... This is a huge company, and I'm, I'm still wondering, why entrepreneurship? They have tons of money, they have tons, tons of products and services and everything else in between, why entrepreneurship? It's because this guy, he killed the market. Before then, you were getting these, these great tones and wallpapers and services through SMS on your dumb phone, technically, and that's what you're, that's why they made so much money off of you, because the carriers made money off of you, and the content creators made money off of you. And you are getting charged on your bill with that. But this guy, what he ended up doing was more or less democratizing the whole experience, where you, as a consumer, can actually download this content and create the content on your phone. You don't need a ringtone anymore. You, you can make it yourself, half the time. So, at the end of the day, still, Java in 2008, when, or 2006 when this came out, was still king, right? They had tons of phone numbers around the world for remarketing purposes, for data, um, to, you know, to understand you as a subscriber, how many times I can bill you, 50, you know, 
you know, how many times I could bill you, everything else in between. They still spent millions and millions of dollars a month on advertising to, to market these services and products. And they had, you know, multiple products and services, over a hundred different products and services globally uh, at any given time. At any given time. So, with all that stuff, I came into it in 2012. So I'm, if any, is anyone from Java first? Okay, so I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm not totally disparaging the experience that you had because it, it was a fantastic experience. But in 2012, it was, it was not good times there. It was, we have a declining business, we had not you know, been able to actually you know, tackle the app marketplace uh, we haven't. We weren't able to really see subscriber growth outside of our core countries: Germany, the U.S., Australia, Brazil. And so we were. In a, Java at that point was at a point where they were just a declining business, and so they needed to think about how do we innovate, how do we think about different things. So um, it was. It was actually fortuitous. Internally, they started to start thinking about lean startup. They already started to think about these concepts. Um, and so when I came in, they more or less were able to give me a, a little bit of a budget to be able to do some of the things that we were able to, to do in terms of iteration. So here's one of the products that we tried. Und dein Smartphone. Täglich stellt OAPD dir die coolsten Apps und Spiele kostenlos zum Download zur Verfügung. Hier bekommst du alles, was du willst. Von Wetter-Apps über Mars-Expeditionen bis hin zu angesagten top chart spielen wie Heyday, das mega erfolgreiche Farmspiel. Kümmere dich um deine Tiere und freue dich auf friedliches Leben. Hol dir OAPD jetzt ganz einfach in Google Play oder App Store oder sende einfach eine SMS mit Game an 84200. Now, does, does that look familiar in terms of some of the ads that you saw at some point? Um, so, but it's different though. Different from what the traditional Jumper products were. Jumper products were traditionally the SMS and you get a, a piece of content. This one, you're getting actually a game that you can get off, you know, uh, that you can download for free. So we tried to iterate our business by using existing uh, technologies and existing marketing strategies. So we built this app uh, in 2012 when I first started. And what you end up seeing is that we are actually number one in lifestyles, uh, you know, 10 in certain countries. In Ireland, apparently we're at number four, um, which was a big success. 23 in, uh, in, in Germany. This is the Google Play Store. So if you go to Google Play and all of a sudden search for you know, something, you'll see on the right hand side, you know, an app. And our app was there. This is actually the first time that Jamba had ever been in the top 100 in the Google Play Store throughout their whole time. They had over a hundred different applications. This is the first application that was done. And this application was done with a team of two interns, myself, uh, an external developer, and a very, very small budget. So having that success, you know, done, still didn't really make much, it didn't really move the needle because at a big company with multi-million dollars in revenue, this product didn't make much revenue in reality. Uh, it showed it to success. It showed, it showed the ability to, uh, you know, get get out there into the marketplace. It allowed us to, you know, figure out how to iterate um, and build products that are outside of our core products. Set. But at the end of the day, a big business needs to make money, right? And so we didn't make money, and we burned a little bit of money. But what we were able to illustrate was that we understood a couple things. So we understood a couple pain points from a publisher perspective or an application developer perspective. We understood that you know, building an app is easy, marketing an app is hard. It takes a lot of money to get to the top of the rank, and if you don't know how to do it, you're gonna hire another company to do it for you, and you're gonna spend even more money with that. So that's one, one thing we learned. Uh, the second thing that we learned was data, in and of itself, is impossible to get. You have 15 different data solutions to be able to aggregate to figure out where this person Sebastian, for instance, if he downloaded my app, where the hell did he come from? I have no idea. That's the problem with the data that we had um, with the traditional products um, a, an application developer would use. And then third, um, and you know, that the, the biggest problem was 
that it wasn't tied to our, uh, you know, our core marketing sets, our core solutions. We weren't tied to a Jamba product because a Jamba product made you go into a subscription, right? And so our whole business was leverage all the things that we have, the phone numbers, the millions of dollars of revenue, and the multiple number of applications and products and services, and remarket those consumers. We weren't able to. We weren't able to do that um, because um, this app experience was totally different. The consumer behavior was totally different. And so when you think about that, um, you end up finding that you know internally there were tons of pain points, but we were able to iterate and you know kind of think, okay, what are we doing? I don't know if you watch Friends. I'm a little old, so um, uh, we started to think, okay, well. We know that it's expensive for an app developer to actually build out an app and market the app and get, you know, be super successful. And if I'm, if that application is actually super successful, it takes, you know, the ad revenue that's associated to it won't actually support their marketing spend. So that's one thing we learned. We learned on top of that, you know, how do we do a tracking and data? Um, and we actually built out a tracking and data solution to be able to do this. Um, and then we started to say, well, why don't we? Instead of doing this for Jamba, why don't we do this for ourselves and for other companies? Other third-party solutions and companies who are trying to advertise their products and services. Now, that's a, a little bit of a revolutionary idea within Jamba. So what you end up getting is kind of a little bit of politics. So the politics in, in, at hand is when you want to build out a third-party solution that's not really helpful for Jamba or the, the parent company, you're taking resources away. You're taking budget away from other people. You're taking you know, time and focus. When there, there were, at that time, probably 50 different other projects going on at the same time. And all of a sudden, you're moving a whole team. In, certain, in this situation, we moved a whole division of developers onto this project. Um, and that was a big, big risk. And on top of that, we didn't have the expertise to run an advertising company. And so that means you have to hire people which is a bigger thing, because you don't have HR in place to be able to understand who these people are, right? And so, you know, after a little bit of hand wringing and a little bit of backroom politics and a little bit of talking, we were able to start to move forward and build out a team. So this team was the developers uh, that were in on the fifth floor of the Jumbo building. This was a team of marketing people that came from other parts of the organization, from TV to our media buying team. We started hodgepodging a team together at the same time hiring new people. With great success, actually. So our, in the, our, what we ended up doing was doing an MVP, traditional. So what we wanted to do was build an advertising network um, that enabled uh, publishers, application developers, to generate revenue on their site. That was one of the core things that we saw that was a problem. They weren't making enough money within their application. And then two, we wanted to find a way to distribute this. Uh, uh, we wanted to find a way to distribute advertising to consumers, and, and so that was another thing that we were able to do because advertisers were willing to pay us millions of dollars, which they ended up doing, but they were willing to pay us millions and millions of dollars. So we built out an MVP. Frankly, what we ended up doing was we found a competitor and we more or less cloaked it. That's what we did. Um, and what we found was we found a, a, a great competitor that was doing a great job. It was very simple, and we built accordingly. And within probably about three months, um, we were able to go live. And on top of that, we were able to start to think about what are all the other Java services that they were able to offer. They were able to offer SMS solutions because they've been doing SMS since 2000, right? So we were able to start to say, hey, advertiser, are you interested in you know spamming? A number of people, not spamming, that's not spamming. It was not spamming. <laughs> if this goes on, but it was not spamming. It was totally legal. Um, and to be able to utilize this data to be able to, you know, you know, uh, you know, sell services to consumers. Second part was you saw that TV ad. How many of you know how much a TV ad costs to make? It costs roughly about a thousand dollars, really, in reality. How many of you know how much it costs to actually put it on the, on TV? You would think that's the thing. You would think it's really, really expensive 
But if you're a company that's spending multi-millions of dollars on a monthly basis, it's really, really cheap. Because you're buying out a ton of inventory. So we are already taking that as well. Right? We're leveraging different services that Jamba had built over the past 10 years and offering it as services to other companies. So those are two, two of the things that we were able to do. And then by then, we were able to more or less leverage all the other network relationships or advertising relationships that Jamba had at that point and add on top other new relationships to the point where um, probably our first year after we launched, it was probably around 15, upwards of $15 million in terms of revenue that we were able to drive uh, within that year. So, and then on top of that, uh, just last year in, in January, um, Jamba was now then acquired by Freenet, which is a big MVNO um, company, a uh, German company. So, I guess the three key points that I kind of want to go towards in terms of entrepreneurship is a lot of it, like life, is timing, right? If you didn't, have, if you didn't have Steve Jobs who came up with the iPhone, more or less destroy the mobile content business and allow consumers to more or less become, you know, allow them to create their own content, that would have never happened, for sure. On top of that, in terms of timing, if you didn't have senior management to be able to support you through that whole process. Even, then, even when you fail or did not make the revenue expectation, but still give you cover to be able to do something internally, that's a timing thing. That's a total timing thing. The second part is, it's a kind of a leverage thing, right? We were talking about leverage, TV, SMS, advertisers that, and business relationships that they already had. You have to leverage that when you're internal, when you're an internal product. Um, if you don't do that, you're not actually doing your company a service, and you're not doing your product a service, um, because when you when you think of Google as a three million, you know, three hundred pound gorilla that comes into the space, that's their, that's the reason why they are. Um, they have other services that come in, and they're supported by Google. The money, the talent, the time to be able to do that. So utilize that as much as you possibly can. Think strategically when you're, when you're thinking about your, your product and your service, um, uh, when you're kind of iterating internally. And the last point is actually, um, it's team. It really does come down to team because if you want to do kind of a lean sort of thing, you can't have uh, a team that's fragmented. You can't have a team that's still playing office politics to a certain extent. Um, you have to have a coordinated team that has, you know, um, leaders who've been in the company for you know, six, eight, ten years who start to buy into this vision. Because if you don't have that, you, you, it will be very, very difficult. So for instance, a small anecdote was at Jamba, senior management and more or less everyone else sat between glass doors. And that's a normal thing. Everyone sees that. Right? And so what we ended up trying to do, and they sit on multiple floors. At that time, I think we were on, there was like five floors that we have. And so what you end up having is we have technology at the bottom, marketing kind of in the middle, and then you got top management on top, right? And so what we tried to do was we tried to create a startup environment, kind of like what you saw um, in Holger's, one of Holger's slides where everyone was literally sitting on top of each other. Um, and so we moved technology up to the marketing floor. We had our marketing team move in with uh, with them literally sitting next to them and annoying the heck out of them. Um, and, but that process created instantaneous feedback that from a developer perspective, they don't understand what they're building. A lot of times, they think someone's telling them to build something and then they build it and it's, then marketing comes back and says, you built it incorrectly, why did you do this way? If you have a scenario where each team is sitting right next to each other and the stakeholders are right next to each other, you get a scenario where it becomes a very fluid process. So I think that's one of the big things that you end up doing is if you can, and it's very difficult in companies that are over 200, 200 people. It's a logistical nightmare, let me tell you. Um, but if you can do that, that's one of the best ways to really start to innovate and iterate on your, on your products. So I think I'm done. <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know. So show hands and I run to you. Everything was
was clear. <laughs> what kind of advertisement on the apps have you done? So, I mean, when I was at Jamba, we were doing a lot of, I think when you, if you look at the marketplace right now, um, we do a lot, a lot of the major spenders are actually gaming companies. So a lot of gaming companies are actually spending a lot of money because, um, from a marketing perspective, I'll just go through there. Um, from a marketing perspective, uh, traditional brands and agencies still are formulating their ideas as to how mobile works in their environment. So if you are, I don't know, Club Monte, What's Club Monte's mobile mar marketing strategy? Right, right now, it's a very physical product. There might be a QR code. Why would anyone, you know, sign up to a site to re maybe receive a coupon? These guys have not figured out how are they going to make a return on investment within mobile. Um, and so, what you end up getting is a lot of the gaming companies actually know how to do that because they actually get paid by Apple. Right? You, how many of you play Candy Crush? All right. Have you ever paid for anything on Candy Crush? <coughs> exactly. That's how I, that's how Candy Crush makes money, and that's why King, which was one of our largest advertisers, um, how how they were able to spend you know millions and millions of dollars actually on a monthly basis. So that's primarily who we ran. Uh, we ran some brands, uh, but primarily it was uh, games. Yep. Which things did you learn at Google, or did you experience at Google that helped you on this uh, long journey? That's that's a good question, actually. Um, so I think what you end up getting at Google is an environment of extremely smart people uh, who are very laid back. They're competitive. It was a very competitive environment, but it, is that me? No. Um, they were very competitive. But what you end up getting is a lot of idea sharing. So I started at Google in two thousand three. Um, so kind of before it became Google, Google, Google. And so what you get is it was an environment where it was extremely relaxed, but there was a focus and a mission. Um, you never had senior management and, you know, more or less super, super high up. Access was really, really easy to be able to get to any of your senior managers. Um, within the kind of the bullpen that we had at one point, you had managers who were sitting with employees. And so that was a big thing too. It's like the information sharing, the camaraderie uh, that was there was was the appropriate environment to succeed. And that's what throughout our uh, you know our career and the company that I'm I'm at now is that's what we want to do. That's the type of environment that we want. Um, you you are structured in the sense that you have KPIs and you have you understand kind of what your 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 funnel and your business model is going to be and how to you know more or less optimize that. But um, I think those are the big things that I learned when I was at Google. Uh, you another question? Uh, yeah, what, what did you <coughs> do or say to senior management to convince them to back you? Uh, I think, well, one of them, I, I think the backing process was, some of it was already done before. So for me, I, I was working at the Washington Post in their social media division before I moved. Um, so they already knew that there was a green light to do something. So that was, that was a nice part. It wasn't you know, that difficult. The difficult part was when we started to realize that um, there wasn't a lot of traction with the initial product, the OAPI Day product. Um, but when you're, when you, when, but in marketing and sales, sometimes you're able to spin things. So we were, I was able to spin a couple of things um, in, our, in, our, in our favor to be able to continue with this. Because what you end up finding when we did that product was that a number of advertisers were willing to spend roughly about $200,000 to $300,000 with us if we were ever at scale. The problem is we never got to scale because it was way too expensive. So by more or less being able to communicate that information, um, being able to communicate that we were successful internally to be able to succeed marketing-wise, that was a really, those were really easy kind of um, um, easy you know, ideas or you know, um, points to be able to, to tackle them. Um, the biggest part was actually technology. Getting a technology team outside of uh, a technology team. And so what you ended up, I ended up having to do uh, was a lot of lobbying. So I started seeding ideas and other in certain teams to see which team I wanted. Um, that was one, one thing. Um, and they were extremely receptive. Because if you think about it, 
At that point, some people have been there for 10 years, and they've been selling ringtones for 10 years. So some of them, was, they were ready. They were ready to do something different, change it up a little bit more. Um, and so it was, that part of it wasn't very difficult from a you know, developer perspective or a product manager perspective. Um, the big problem was, no, that wasn't really a problem. It was this, you know, the CTO, the you know, chief product officer, you know, getting them to kind of buy in and say, hey, we trust that you're able to move this forward. Um, we've got, you've got a team that's extremely energetic that wants to move things forward. That was a big, that was the, that moment where you had to just more or less illustrate all the reasons why it's gonna work. Because, at, but at the end of the day, they started to see that, you know, that Jamba business was really falling down. So they needed something. Okay, more questions? One more question, maybe. No, not now? Okay, so there's time for more questions later. So, keep waiting another hand.